All right, thanks again for joining us. Another edition of Maverick Spotlight. Taking a moment here to have a quick chat with the head coach of the Minnesota State men's basketball program, Matt Margentaler. Matt, uh, how you doing these days? I'm doing good, Pete. It's nice to, to see a face and, and be talking to somebody besides my wife right now, <laughs> which is a good thing. You know, it's really it's nice that you, I get along with my wife so well that this quarantine has, has been not bad at all. Yeah, I, uh, and we all, we all know, we all think very highly of Dawn, so uh, <laughs> I appreciate everything that she's doing to try to keep you up and running. And so let's, let's talk a little bit about your season, Matt. You end up uh, uh, finishing fairly strongly there, right, with the, the run that he had yeah. postseason, and uh, you didn't get your customary 20 wins. You came close, uh, and you know, came close to qualifying for the NCAA tournament, just came up a little bit short in the postseason tournament. Yeah, we did. I thought our guys really played well down the stretch. We, that's what we talked about right from Christmas on was we just want to play our best basketball um, in March and, you know, in late February. And that's what we did. Um, it was a lot of fun. I thought, you know, it, with the injuries we had to start the year, um, the one thing I, told, I thought our, our guys really did was they're they all bought in. They stayed together. The locker room was great. Um, the camaraderie, just the, everything that we asked from our basketball team, we got this year. Um, and for us to have that success late in the season, uh, was a lot of fun and rewarding, uh, especially for our seniors. You know, we had those three seniors that worked extremely hard. And, you know, really, PA, we played the last basketball game we could possibly play. We made it to the championship game, and nobody in Division II played after that game. And so, um, you know, not many people can say they played in the last game. Now, obviously, we didn't win that game, but um, very, very competitive. And, and, and uh, I, I was very happy how uh, our seniors got to, to leave uh, with, with feeling uh, some success. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, you talked about the seniors there in, in uh, a couple players in particular, and uh, Cameron Kirksey and uh, Kevin Krieger over the course of their careers uh, for the Mavericks certainly made their mark. Cameron Kirksey will go down as one of the all-time top scorers, and I don't know if we had a, a guy who was clutch over, as Kevin Krieger during the course of his career. Yeah, Kevin, I mean, I, I go back to two years ago when he made the shot right against Minot State in the semifinals of the conference tournament. And, um, but made big shots after big shots. And, and Kevin Hill was the first team all-conference as a sophomore, and then he battled injuries really for his last two years um, and missed a lot of games. But Kevin had a great, great career. And, and Cam Kirk, so we can say by him, one of the most talented guys I've ever coached in 19 years. Um, you know, and, and he had the ability to uh, not touch a basketball all summer long and show up and be the best basketball player on the floor. And, and you know, he's, he, he just had an innate ability to do that, great length, great uh, – athleticism and, and uh, yeah, we're going to miss those two guys. No question. And, you know, Carter Ash really did a nice job for us too. Um, you know, he, he was one of those guys that uh, was, was very serviceable for us and, and it was a, an unbelievable teammate and, and a great guy to have in your locker room. And then um, relative to at the other end of the spectrum with uh, the newcomers on the roster that you had this past year, who really made their imprint, you know, like, like Ryan Holt, uh, Kelby Kramer, you can go down the list on, some of the stuff Corvon seals in the postseason, um, it appears to me, and, and based on what we've seen recruiting-wise, what you have coming in in the fall, that uh, we should be able to pay, make a, a, a nice run here uh, when, once we resume the, the new season when it does start next fall. Yeah, I think that we have a great, great core of young guys right now. And, and you talked about Kelby, and who's the newcomer of the year this past year, and, and Ryland, the, the freshman of the year. Corvon played unbelievable at a position that he really is not used to playing. We put him at the point, and he did a great job for us. And, uh, but he's more of a scoring guard, and so we'll see that next year. Uh, and we brought in you know, four really good freshmen coming in in that, in that class that I think all four of those guys have opportunities to play next year for us. Um, and we're still looking at a couple more guys. We need to bring in two more at least, uh, maybe three, and, and uh, to solidify this recruiting class. But I really think that we have an opportunity to, to really raise the bar next year, get back to where we've been in the past, and, and maybe even be better. And I think that's, that's exciting. And it's, there's no – I've told these recruits that I'm talking to right now, there's really not been a more exciting time in probably the last eight to ten years since I've been here than right now. And, um, and sometimes it's hard to say because we can't bring these young men on campus – but uh, the things we have to offer, um, you know, the, the program itself and what the people like is the longevity of, of our staff. You know, I mean, I've been there, just finished my 19th year. Coach shot has been with me now the whole entire time of 19 years. And, um, you know, we just, we just have a great continuity going there. And, and, and you don't see the success we've had that you maintain that. You know, a lot of times you see the, the peaks and ebbs and flows um, in, in programs. We've been very consistent. I think that's the hardest thing to do, not only in, 
in uh, in basketball, but life and business. Those are that's hard. That's hard to do is remain consistent. And we've been able to remain consistent, consistent successfully for a long time. Yeah, and I want to focus here on recruiting just for a, a second, Matt, with uh, the consistency you have with your your program uh, program philosophy. Uh, what a great school to recruit to at Minnesota State, the community in Mankato, what you have here, the uh, experience that we have here, the success we've had with the program over the course of time. Uh, it is an interesting time relative to where we are as a culture right now with what everybody's experiencing. And the, the recruiting part of it is uh, one of those things that what I would assume would be a, a kind of a challenge right now. You can't actually have kids come to campus and show them around how great it is uh, approach-wise. What, what exactly – uh, do you do in this situation when you are talking about kids with the potential of coming to MSU to play for the Mavericks? Well, we're on the phone more than we ever had been, no question about that. Uh, just trying to build those relationships. Uh, we're doing these right here. We're doing Zoom, Zoom meetings with, uh, with parents. I think this is something that we're going to continue on even when things open up because we can be there with mom and dad if the young man's at somewhere else. And, um, and so I think these, are, these have been very uh, beneficial for us. But the thing that, you know, we have great things here. I, our university is one of the best universities to show. It shows great. And yes, we have pictures and videos and those types of things, but it's, but it's really about getting these young men on campus. That the, the physically being here is a, is a big thing for us. And, and we're missing out on that. Um, but I think that, that people understand, you know, as great as our university is, um, and I, I, tell, I tell our recruits this all the time, is it's not about the brick and mortar. So it's about the people. It, it, we have unbelievable people here from top to, top to bottom that work together, that, uh, that they're doing the right things. And, and you look at not only our basketball program, but look at all of our programs. We're all been successful. And, and that, that says something right there uh, about our administration, about our, about our university, and about our coaches. Because I think we have some of the finest coaches um, anywhere that, that, you know, from, from the women's side, the men's side. I mean, we're all competitive and, um, and all friends and all want the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think anybody would question that. Looked at uh, the success that we've been having with our sports almost uh, across the board over the course of time. Of course, the coaches play such an important role. Let's talk about, uh, as a coach, and how you've been in contact with uh, the returning student athletes and how uh, the disruption and uh, what we're going through relative to not being able to finish the spring semester and maybe on into the spring. And, and uh, what have you got you and your staff been doing to keep in touch and uh, keep getting connected with your guys. You know, it's, it's interesting because when we got done, uh, we only had a couple of days before spring break and then we didn't do our, our year end meetings individually with anybody. Cause we figured they'd be coming back. We'd do them right then that next week. Uh, we did that. We did all of our individual uh, year end meetings by zoom. Uh, I thought that was very good. Just get with them, let them know kind of what's going on at Minnesota state and, and make sure they're doing okay. We do a lot of Zoom meetings with our guys. I'm doing a lot. Of, I've never Facetime anybody before PA until uh, these past couple of weeks, and I'm Facetiming guys left and right. My mom and dad never Facetime anybody. So my dad, he, that's his <laughs> new thing now is, is be on you know, Facetime. Um, but I think that you know we're just trying to stay in front of them as much as we possibly can, help them academically. Um, you know, a lot of them just a lot of them are, are at home. They're in their board. They're, they want to come back. They want to be here, and and that's a tough thing. And and you know um, some of our guys are they're better off being here because they, they, need, they need structure. And I think that's a really hard thing, not only for our guys, but a lot of student athletes, the, the structure part is what these young men and women need, and they're not getting that what they're used to. And, um, and so we're trying to, trying to give that to them. Um, you know, a couple times a week, we're meeting as a team, we're talking all the time. Um, you know, I think that we're going through, as a, as a staff right now, evaluating every game that we played uh, this past year. Um, again, and giving our guys assignments that are doing the same thing. And so, just trying to keep them busy right now and, and let them know we're here for them. And that's the biggest thing they need to know is that does, does Coach Martin, there, Coach Schott, does Coach Garvin, do they still care about me? Because they're like our kids. You know, if you leave recruiting for a couple of days, they don't want they don't, you can't come back and, and, and discipline your own son or daughter. They want to know his dad love them. And if they know that, then you can go ahead and discipline and be with them. And that's what same thing with our student athletes. They need to know that, that we're there for them. Well, Matt, uh, it sounds like you're uh, finding a way to get uh, through things. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, we can all be together again soon. Looking forward to uh, seeing you back in, in Taylor Center. And, uh, and uh, I know you can't wait to, to get back to work with your staff and with your guys in person. Hopefully, we're not that far away. So, anyways, uh, looking forward to next year. Thanks a lot for joining us today. No problem, PA. Always a pleasure, Mike. All right, buddy. Take care.